So Terence Crawford has reached out to Errol Spence with a view to restarting talks for their undisputed fight at welterweight. So here, they quote Errol Spence as saying, it's cool, I'll spin the block. And it's saying that this is Spence suggesting he's still interested in picking up where he left off with Crawford. And Crawford said, he added Errol Spence and said, I'm ready when you want to spin the block, just giving you a heads up with a winking emoji. And of course, Spence says he's ready, anything can happen, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we really need this fight. I think that the way Team Spence have gone about it over the years with regards to this rivalry with Crawford has really done boxing a massive disservice. And look, I'm someone that has always liked Errol Spence as a fighter. I've, you know, prior to him starting to go out in the clubs and putting weight on and all this kind of stuff, which, you know, kind of disappointing because it impacts how good he can be in a, as a fighter in a negative way, right? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him doing that, you know, from a moral perspective, right? Going out and enjoying himself and drinking in the clubs and all that. Great. But as a selfish boxing fan who wants to see fighters at their absolute best, I don't like when I see a guy out in the club and putting weight on and ballooning up between fights because that means he may not be at his best, you know? So selfish boxing fan perspective, I don't like to see Errol Spence doing all that. And obviously, he nearly lost his life because of carrying on with all the partying and drinking. So, um, yeah, anyway, Errol Spence has always been someone who I admire as a fighter, you know, very tenacious, very rounded skill set, very talented, confident in himself, you know? So I've always admired him, always tipped him to beat Kell Brook long before he did. But the way that he's gone about this rivalry with Crawford, to me, stinks. With Al Heyman, everybody has to cross the street. Well, not everybody, but so many fighters. They're told, if you want to get this big showdown with your rival, this big unification, you can't be with that promoter over there. You've got to cross the street. You've got to leave that promoter because we just won't deal with him. And then come and sign with this promoter or this advisor, quote unquote. That's foul. That's foul. And that's what Team Spence apparently have been doing for all these years with regards to Crawford. Not wanting to make the fight because they're all dancing to Al Heyman's tune. Where Al Heyman wants everything in-house so that he can't take any L's. Yeah, If Crawford were to sign with Al Heyman, let's say three, four, five, six fights, whatever, and then Al Heyman makes Crawford Spence, it doesn't matter to Al Heyman who loses because he's got both of the guys under contract. You see what I'm saying? And so this rivalry between them has basically been all about Al Heyman, him getting what he wants. Not the fighters getting what they want, but Al Heyman getting what he wants. And let's say the networks as well getting what they want, as in the networks that Al Heyman puts his shows on, Fox, Showtime, whatever. So, yeah, very, very disappointed in the way that things have gone down. I hope the fight can still happen. Crawford doesn't seem to want to get locked into any kind of long-term contract. And that's probably why the fight didn't get made earlier on this year. Not that it would have happened this year, but, you know, they were trying to make it earlier on this year. And, yeah, I suspect that's because Crawford just won't sign a long-term contract. And Al Heyman must feel, as a manager, that Crawford has got a good chance of beating his golden goose. And he's thinking, well, if you're going to come in and potentially beat my golden goose, there's only two ways I'm going to allow you the, the opportunity to do that. Either you sign a long-term deal with me, or I pay you absolute peanuts. I give you such a short end that you're either going to turn the fight down or even if you win, I'm still going to get a massive payday off it because we've paid you so little. <laughs> you know I mean? That's what it looks like to me. It's foul. It's so foul. 
And um, what do you do if you're in Terence Crawford's position? He's a man, he's got pride. He's a world champion. He wants to be respected as a world champion. You know, this is a multi-weight world champion at that. A guy who's looked at as pound for pound and all this kind of thing. Now, obviously, money is king. And when you're coming to the negotiating table, if you're not making a fraction, a quarter of what your opponent is making, you can't demand parity in terms of your purse. And Terence Crawford, according to him, he wasn't demanding parity. He was willing to take the short end of the stick and, you know, give up so many things at the negotiating table. And look, just because Crawford says it doesn't necessarily mean it's true, obviously. But Heyman doesn't do interviews, so we can't get anything off him, right? Crawford has spoken about conversations he's had with Heyman. We haven't heard Heyman comment on it because he doesn't comment, he doesn't say anything. So, you know, we, we've only got what Crawford says to go on because the other side just don't speak. Errol Spence might speak occasionally, but you get the feeling that he has to talk to Al Heyman for permission to say anything, you know? So it's one of them ones. Very frustrating that the fight didn't happen or the fight didn't get, you know, made and signed, whatever, earlier on this year. Fingers crossed they can get it done sometime in 2023. <laughs> I have to say I can't hold my breath because of the track record of Al Heyman. You know, maybe Terence Crawford just going to have to bite the bullet. It all depends on what matters to him most. And also another thing to consider is if they're weighting things so heavily in Errol Spence's favor by way of stipulations and the contract and the purse and all this kind of thing, if they're weighting things so heavily in Spence's favor, this shows that there's a lot of power behind Spence, right? Therefore, if it's a close fight, a competitive fight, is Crawford concerned about getting a fair shake with the judges? Maybe he thinks it won't go to the judges. I don't know. But that's another thing to consider if you're trying to imagine where Crawford's mind is at right now. Because some people would say, yeah, you've got to bite the bullet and just take it if you really care about legacy. Take that short end of the stick. Go fight Errol Spence for whatever BS contract they give you and, you know, pittance they pay you because once you win then you'll be the man right but again that's if he cares about legacy because Spencer said that it won't affect his legacy if he doesn't fight Terence Crawford which to me is laughable <laughs> that's totally laughable but maybe Crawford to some extent feels the same he might have said the same thing about Spence I forget now and that's not good is it when both fighters are saying that that fighting their rival the biggest fight in the world weight division you know not that fight not happening wouldn't affect their legacy like come on we don't want to hear that anyway let's hope it does take place let me know what you guys think in the comments